watching Halloween Wars, feeling very much in the Halloween spirit and mood. So, first thing we are going to try fixing is the Zorro sword. I have a long list of chores today, household and otherwise, but first we've got to get all of our dumpster diving treasures repaired and where they need to go right away. That is something I have been committed to for the last several months is right away fixing things that need fixing, whether they're those uh, styrofoam wreaths that we've found, I went ahead and fixed those, or things like this. Get them fixed, get them repaired, get them on their way. Don't let all the projects just stack up. So we're gonna get out the E6000 and some painter's tape and we're gonna try fixing this sword. Reagan is so excited. I got that sword glued and taped the E6000 and the painter's tape, we will see. There really wasn't much room to try and um, adhere uh, the, the blade onto the hilt, but we'll see how it goes. Definitely gonna give it a try. We will let it dry for at least 24 hours before taking the painter's tape off and testing it. It's being supported by that little terracotta pumpkin that we went ahead and fixed the other day successfully with the E6000. It has a little line, obviously, from where it was cracked. I could fix that if I wanted to, but really I don't care. Also with the E6000, we fixed these two pumpkins. The boo just needed to be reattached on top. And then this guy had several cracked pieces and we just stuck it all back together and used some painter's tape and let it dry. And now he's beautiful. And we added that little black leaf, some of you may recall. So let's let this dry and we'll come back to it. But while we're waiting for that, we have several other fixes that need to be done. This bamboo cane, I've been debating and debating if I wanted to do like an E6000 fix or if I wanted to just wrap it with some tape, like we have some of that washi tape and maybe make it look crafty that way. I, I don't know yet. I'm going to go ahead and start with the E6000 and just kind of see how it goes, maybe see if it works for one thing, and then... <sighs> then we'll go from there. I don't know. Let's just, let's, let's start with the glue and then, and then we'll see what we think. I glued and taped the cane, but as, as I anticipated, uh, I don't love it. It's, you can't really tell with the tape there, but it's going to be uneven. It's almost like it's missing some of the like outer layer of the, the bamboo cane. See how there's like this kind of layer here and here. It, it just looks like it's missing something. So we'll probably do something more crafty with it. We can apply some of the washi tape. We could wrap it in uh, hemp baling uh, twine or whatever it's called. I think that would be really cool. Maybe even some beads, um, some burlap. This could be turned into something really, really awesome. Shepherd's hook. It could even go Christmassy. I don't know. I don't know, but for now, we'll just let it dry since we already got that set up and we have so many other projects to work on, so we'll come back to it. But if you have suggestions of what you would do with it as far as decorating it, crafting it, upcycling it, please tell us in the comments. Next, we have the Christmassy kind of snowflake lantern. The only problem is that this was broken off. So glad that I uh, grabbed this part. When I realized that that's what went to this, I was like, oh no, I don't think I ended up grabbing that little piece, but I looked in one of the other totes. Hallelujah. There it was. So we're going to glue this back on. You could do this with hot glue, but the E6000 will hold longer, be more durable. You could also use wood glue and maybe a little tack nail if you wanted to. So I'm going to get that one fixed. And then I also noticed there was this braid in one of the bins from the stuff we found this weekend. And sorry, I'm out of breath. I am running all over the place. <laughs> have, oh man, I have such a long list of stuff to get done and only a few days to get it done in. So I was thinking this might be fun to have something like this on here. Uh, another idea would be to just turn this into a candy cane. The problem is I don't really want to completely cover up the look and feel of the bamboo. I really like that kind of rustic, wild quality to it. But adding things like this, more natural looking elements, I think that'd be pretty cool. Plus, it'd be awesome to go ahead and use this and not have to put it away in our other crafting supplies. One less thing to have to do, to have to sort, to have to store. 
moving right along through our projects, there's this little ornament. And all that's wrong with it is it's missing some of those little pieces right there uh, from like an acorn. Or not an acorn, a... Uh, <laughs> Shoot, what are those freaking things called? Pine cone, that's what it is. So I will just break a couple of pieces of pine cone off of one of our pine cones that float around all over the place and the kids are always bringing home and we will repair that, so stay tuned for that. Then there were the two trees and they had this around them and some of the fabric was coming up on the edges of this one, so I just dabbed it with some E6000 and glued it. And you could see on the back of this and the front of this where this guy was supposed to be glued. He had just come unglued, <laughs> don't we all sometimes? Uh, so I just went ahead and applied some glue and stuck him right back where he needed to go. And uh, we just have to let him dry and he will be all set. Then we've got the really awesome ax top thingy and I couldn't find the stick when we were in the bins. I think it probably was the one that was like broken into like three pieces that we didn't take. Luckily, when I find sticks that are intact and don't go to anything else, I do take them because uh, inevitably there will be a situation where I'm able to use them. So I looked at the ones that I had and this one is probably going to be best. It's not meant for one of these. These normally come with a plastic tube stick. This one is for uh, a dance cane and was supposed to have something on top, which obviously was broken off. But what I found is that the bottom that has the little knob for dancing fits perfectly because of how it's narrowed, fits perfectly into the ax. So how cool is that? Um, I don't think this is actually called an ax. What is that called? Please, one of you that's knowledgeable in, you know, ancient weapons, <laughs> medieval weapons, tell me in the comments, what is that called? Anyway, I'm just going to use some of the E6000 and we're going to glue this on. Reagan is so excited to play with this later today. So this one, he should be able to play with this today. The sword, probably not till tomorrow or the day after. And especially because we've got to see if, if that bond will hold that. But this, this shouldn't be a problem at all. While the axe is outside drying, I just leaned it up against the porch rail. We are going to look at this adult standard Wicked Witch costume. It said that there was a rip in the side of the dress, so I searched diligently. There was not, in fact, a rip in the side of the dress, but right here on the back, on the waist seam, there is a little teeny tiny area right there where the, the stitching has come undone. That will literally take like two minutes <laughs> to fix. It is otherwise absolutely perfect. This costume does not come with the hat or the broom, but we <laughs> found all those fabulous brooms and we have tons more outside. So uh, we will go ahead, pick this up, that's bothering me. We will go ahead and just use one of those for it if we decide to use that costume. Oh, I also wanted to mention, uh, I did find there was another package of those plates from the stuff in the craft store, along with several more of the metal water bottles. They had ended up in a different tote. Now, although this is an adult standard size, we might actually use it for Mimi, but what we'll need to do is just size it down, which really shouldn't be hard. I do have a sewing machine and scissors and plenty of pins, and I think we could size this down appropriately for her. She hasn't 100% decided what she wants to be yet, and in fact, after school today, that is one of our main tasks, along with uh, going and picking out pumpkins, is to figure out exactly what she wants for her costume. Our next repair will be Mr. Fox here, and the original problem was that he didn't have the hanging thing, which he doesn't, but when he got thrown in the dumpster, he got broken even more. And so that's what we're going to start with fixing. You can't use hot glue because this is styrofoam and it'll just melt the styrofoam. And we don't want to deal with that. We want to actually fix it. But that is, again, a great uh, thing about E6000. It will work beautifully. We'll just put some glue in there, glue that back together. And then this, um, I don't know if this goes to him or to the little owl that we also found. Uh, I'm pretty sure it goes to the owl. I'll grab the owl in a second and show you. So we're gonna glue him back together and then we have those gorgeous headbands that were in the bin and are missing some pieces. 
And in all of the odds and ends, you can see there are some pieces. I don't know if we'll have all the pieces in here to fix what's missing. It doesn't look like it, but we'll do the best that we can with what we have found. And then this, the pumpkin uh, topper uh, stem, does go to the squishy pumpkin that we found. It is down in the laundry room. It just needs to be washed and then dried, and then we will just use hot glue and reattach the stem. These other things, the beads, uh, these little odds and ends, the screw, we'll just add to our hardware supplies, and then these we can just add to our many crafting supplies. As you guys know, we are constantly doing craft projects, upcycling, repurposing, and using all kinds of fun stuff like this, including this, which I'm pretty sure was the lid to a candle, either that or the base to something, but because it has this little gasket, pretty sure it went to a candle, but there are a million possibilities of things to um, upcycle this into, to craft it into. Two other things before we work on the headbands. We've got the really awesome broken glasses. What I'm gonna do with these, I'm gonna get a dowel and wrap it in like shiny <laughs> fabric, not fabric, ribbon or something. And I am just going to attach it to one side so that it will just be on, on a stick and these will be really fun for just in like photographs, uh, dress ups, stuff like that. There'll be a really fun look to them. And then this is the one that has me stumped at the moment. It, I don't know if it was a horse or a unicorn, it just says critter, but <laughs> he was decapitated. We find so many of these where the legs are broke off or the heads broke off or the horn is broke off if it was a unicorn. I don't know yet what I wanna do with him. Uh, obviously where he has no head and we didn't find one in the bin, really the only way to go is Halloween and you know, kind of freaky and scary. We'll see. We'll see, stay tuned. Uh, finally, I have these two red buckets and some of you will remember that at one of the CVS dumpsters before they kicked us out, locked us out, uh, we had found a huge box or two of all kinds of Christmas supplies that were most likely illegal dumping. And these were covered in like a shelf paper and said like silent night and they were very Christmassy. I didn't want them to be just straight up Christmas. I wanted to be able to use them for other things. And so, oh, I missed a spot. So I soaked them like three different times in really hot water, peeled off what peeled off easily and then used one of my scrubbies to scrub the rest. I'll have to get back to that and make sure I get the spots that I missed. And then uh, these can be used for so many other things. Uh, a couple of ideas, you know, flower arrangements or to put a gift in for like a teacher or neighbor. Really, the possibilities are endless now that they're not just Christmas. You know, they could be for fall, for Halloween. They could be made scary and spooky. Uh, they could be for Valentine's Day. Yeah, lots and lots of possibilities there. This is the little owl that we found in the same bin where we found the fox. And there's that one little piece that I was talking about and he is missing a piece right there. This piece isn't, I don't think, complete, but it will fill in that spot nicely and he will be, he will be whole. He will be living in our upstairs bathroom because we have another owl, quite a bit bigger, but that looks a lot like him, made out of the same kind of stuff. And they will be very happy living in there together. I am looking at the headbands now and looks like this one is missing that side piece. All we would need to do there, because I don't have a replacement for it, is just break this one off and that way, yeah, you'll still have all of this gorgeous part up here, but no off balance thing. So we'll do that and then this, yeah, we're just gonna use some of the E6000, some painter's tape, and we will glue that right back onto there and have two beautiful headbands, one for each of my girls, or all three of us can share them. And this little piece here, don't worry about that. We'll add that to our jewelry crafting. You guys know we use tons of that stuff, so that will definitely end up being used at some point. Okay, frugal friends. <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. I know you guys are gonna... Well, it depends. It depends on who you are and how you are. But some of you are going to think, holy cow, she's out of her mind. Some of you probably already think that. So we've got the little Frankenstein cup thing. We're going to wash him. Then we have that just stem, black stem with black leaves. 
And then we have one of those horrible dollar store style waste of resources, bad for the environment, plastic things. And this one was torn open. Uh, it's missing the colorful light up thing that went inside. So we've washed it. I'm going to wait for it to dry. And here is what <laughs> my very outside of the box thinking kind of mind has come up with. I have styrofoam balls in the attic. I think I have two of them that are, of course, from the bins. I don't know if they'll be quite the right size, but the plan is let's use the E6000. When this has dried, I'm going to go set it outside and we'll put the ball inside. Hopefully it'll be big enough. If we have to squeeze two in there, we will. Uh, E6000 them on to this inside and then stick the whole thing on top <laughs> of this flowerless stem and add it <laughs> to one of our many Halloween displays throughout the house, uh, yard, or porch. Do you think I'm insane? Or do you get what I'm doing? You have to be able to really stretch your imagination, guys, if you want to make a difference and find uses for stuff like this. And then this is something that we can use for years, will it eventually end up in the landfill? Guys, everything will eventually end up in the landfill. That argument that, oh, it's all gonna end up in the landfill anyway, eventually, blah, 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 why are you even bothering? That whole ridiculous fallacy that just lack of reasoning and giving oneself an excuse to not even try um, drives me insane. And I get that comment from some of our trolls I mean, on a regular basis, and that's so ridiculous. Obviously, everything is eventually gonna be thrown out. Um, <laughs> we're all gonna die, and, and we will all rot and return to the dirt from whence we came. That doesn't mean we should just not make any effort at all, and not only that, but continue contributing to the problem. People, come on now. You're better than that, or you can be better than that. That's just nonsense. Will it end up in the landfill eventually? Sure. But if we show that we are willing to step outside of the box, that we are willing to make the effort to one, try to salvage things and repurpose them, and two, stop buying that crap, then the production of it will slow down. This all goes back to Marxism and the capitalist structure. Supply and demand, if you don't buy it, they'll stop making it it'll stop ending up in the landfill. Do you see this beautiful circle of progress that can happen and that you can be a part of without ever approaching a dumpster? How about that, huh, huh? Anyway, just had to get that off my chest.